lot of people think Miami is just South Beach. You know, I'm taking my talents to South Beach, but uh, actually that's just a small part. This is the real Miami. Wynwood is the street art capital of Miami. It is off the beaten path. This is the side of Miami, uh, you say across that bridge. Alter is the most hyped restaurant in many years in these parts. Brad has been receiving accolades left and right. Just got named like the chef of the year in Miami. His restaurant just got named by the Herald as like the restaurant of the year. It stays exciting because it's always evolving. Gentlemen. It's crazy to see you, buddy. How are you? Here you go. Today, I brought my dad to Alter for the first time. David. <laughs> I mean, we met at a pop-up dinner I did with another chef here in Miami, and we just started talking, and I really hadn't met a diner, a non-chef, so immersed and incredibly excited about food and really knowledgeable as well. He's come in and eaten my entire menu. Every time he has a friend in town, he brings them to the restaurant, not because we're friends or we know each other, because he wants them to share experiences that he has. I like to recommend the good stuff because it's a, it's a mitzvah, it's a good deed. To see the way he talks about food, it's great to know that he can share that same passion with what I'm able to create too. It's my favorite thing to do, so this is the best place to do it. How are we feeling today, guys? Feeling great. Chef's counter okay for you? Preferred. There's nothing like sitting at the chef's counter. It's, you know, a window right into the action. Really what's exciting about where we're at with the food and where we're going is finding really what the capabilities are for ingredients in Florida. Throughout all the time I've known him, it's always evolving, always changing. I've never put the same dish back on, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. I think everything is a constant evolution. But the part that doesn't change is that you eat it and then you ask yourself, why is that so delicious? So Dad, I've been wanting to take you to this place. It's my favorite restaurant in Miami right now. What do you like the best? That's what I want. That, that's an impossible... Because everything looks incredible. You know that's an impossible question. You know... Uh, wow. Here we go. So this is our cobia. It's been cured for about two days now in kombu, which is a Japanese seaweed. It kind of brings out the natural umami. Serve it with a ponzu made of hibiscus, a curd of local key lime, some raw tomato and green apple. Enjoy. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Absolutely. I really thought it was very important to be in Miami, and if we're going to do something different with the food, how important it was to make the price point approachable. I thought it was just really important because I want everyone to be able to eat here, and I also want you to want to eat here on a Tuesday because you're hungry, not because you waited for your mom's birthday or your anniversary, you know, to come eat something. Following that dish, we had the shumai. When you taste the texture, you wouldn't think it's a curry. It's not creamy or heavy at all. It's just green pop, you know, flavor. The relish that he puts on the shumai, sort of like uh, his version of an Argentinian chimichurri, but he makes it with culantro. It's very fresh and light. That dish is tough to pass up. Very bright. I remember when you were doing the version with the crab cake. Like the rice crust on the outside. I don't know which version is my favorite though. That's a good problem to have. Following that dish we had, oh, we had that risotto. With his dish, Brad finds a way to keep it light, even though it's two kinds of cheese. And you know, like it's rich, but not heavy at all. Take it easy over there. The egg. I mean, I don't even know if more words can be said about the egg. <laughs> the, egg the egg is the egg. Oh. The egg is luxury. It's simple luxury. It's accessible luxury. Looks like a cheese packer. Wow. Soft cooked, truffle pearls, olive oil, scallop, espuma. Don't wait. Light as air, and a Gruyere crisp. It's everything you want in an egg dish. Really, really good. Where do you think I learned uh, this taste for fine cuisine? From your mother. <laughs> my mom and my dad, they taught my, my brother and sister and I about good food and, and about family. And that's what great meals are really about. You could eat something that 
will take you back to any kind of memory. And that memory might not, it might not even be like, it's not like because you're eating the exact same thing. It's a feeling, it's about a feeling. What you guys do today didn't happen as much back then. It was not common, you know, people ate at home a lot. Oh, that eat, not eating out as much. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, now, now dining out is like the new going out. And, it can be very you know, entertaining watching these guys do their stuff. Brad is certainly one of the most ambitious chefs. I know one of the most ambitious people I know, but as a chef, he just really has this hunger to be the best. There's an element of finesse and creativity and artistry. Everything he puts on a plate, it, it's great to the eyes, it's great to the palate. This is where I am, this is where I live, this is my home now, and this is the home of Walter. And we want to continuously support the infrastructure of local cuisine. When someone takes a bite and they look over at like their partner or their friend that they're eating with and they just mouth something, because that's all I can see, and, and they might just look at it and try to, what did I just have, you know? And that's my favorite part, that's what I like to do.